Hi guys, so in this video we'll discuss differentiability and the chain rule. Let's go. So let's first discuss some definitions that concern differentiability. So first we have differentiability at the point. So function f is said to be differentiable at the point which we denote by x naught. If the derivative of f at x equals x naught, which we denote by f prime of x naught exists. So another way of stating it, f is differentiable at x naught if x naught is in the domain of f prime. Second, we have differentiability on an open interval. So function f is said to be differentiable on an open interval, which we denote by a, b, if f is differentiable at every real number in a, b. Lastly, we have differentiability on the set of real numbers. So function f is said to be differentiable everywhere if it is differentiable at every real number. So differentiable everywhere is the same thing as being differentiable at every real number. Next, let's move on to left and right derivatives. So first, let's define a function f of x and let it be defined at x equals x naught again. So a point x naught. So this is what we call the left derivative. And we use this symbol here. I'm not sure if you can see the cursor, but it's the symbol with the f prime and the minus and the x naught. That's how we denote the left derivative. And it's given by this limit. So it's read as the limit of f of x minus f of x naught all over x minus x naught as x approaches x naught from the left. Hence, that's why it's called the left derivative. And the left derivative will only have a value if the limit exists. Second, we have the right derivative. So it's pretty similar to the left derivative, but instead for the right derivative, we're approaching x naught from the right. So that's why it's called the right derivative. And then we have this remark. The function f is said to be differentiable at x equals x naught if and only if the left and right derivatives exist and the left and right derivatives are equal. And then the value of the derivative f prime of x naught will be given by the value that will be given by the left and right derivatives. Next, we have this theorem. If f is differentiable at x equals x naught, then f is continuous at x equals x naught. Basically, what that means is that differentiability implies continuity. Then we have the following remarks. If f is discontinuous at x equals x naught, then f is not differentiable at x equals x naught. Fun fact, remark one is what we call the contrapositive of theorem one. And the contrapositive will always have the same truth value as the statement of the contrapositive. So since theorem one is always true, remark one is always true. Number two, we have if f is continuous at x equals x naught, it does not mean that f is differentiable at x equals x naught. So to give an example, we have the absolute value and if we check it at x equals zero, the tangent line to x equals zero for the absolute value function is a vertical line. And of course, the slope of a vertical line is undefined. Hence, that's why the absolute value is indifferentiable, is not differentiable at x equals zero. Finally, we have if f is not differentiable at x equals x naught, it does not mean that f is not continuous at x equals x naught. Again, we use the absolute value function and we check x equals zero. We prove that uh, the absolute value is not differentiable at x equals zero, but we know that it is continuous. Next, we have the next theorem. So basically what this shows is if f is continuous from at x equals x naught from the left and the left derivative, which is the limit exists, then we define the left derivative to be the same limit. It's what we showed a while ago. Then also here we have if f is continuous at x equals x naught from the right, and we have the right derivative, the limit definition of the right derivative to exist, then we define the right derivative to be that limit definition. So you might be asking what's the relevance of the last two theorems. Basically what it means is if you want to prove differentiability at the point, you have to first show continuity at that point. So first you do the continuity test, the continuity test, and then you do the differentiability test. So let's show it what I just said in this following problem. So determine if f of x is differentiable at x naught equals zero. So again, we first check the continuity of f of x at x equals zero. 
So first, let's check if it's defined. So based on the domain of f of x, you can see that x equals zero is with the x times secant x. So if we evaluate x times secant x at zero, you'll have zero as your value. Now let's check the limit of f of x as x approaches zero from the left. If you check the domain, the, va the function on the left of zero is x cubed plus x. So if we, if we define that function at x equals zero, you'll get zero. And then if we get the limit of, as x approach, of f of x as x approaches zero from the right, you can see that x secant x is the function on the right of zero. And then if you uh, value it at zero, you get zero, just like at the f of zero. And then obviously we have been able to show that the left limit and the right limit are equal to one another, meaning that the limit of f of x as x approaches zero is zero. And since f of zero is equal to the limit of f of x as x approaches zero, we can now conclude that f of x is continuous at x equals zero. So we've proved continuity. Now we move on to uh, differentiability. So we determine the left and right derivatives of f of x at x equals zero. So first, let's get the derivatives of the functions in f of x. So first, let's get the derivative of x times secant x. So of course, we apply a product rule. We know that the derivatives of secant x is secant x times tangent x, and then the derivative of x is 1. And then we get this following value, uh, this following expression. And then let's get the derivative of x cubed plus x. So if you use the rules of, uh, of derivatives, you'll get 3x squared plus 1. Hence, we have the following piecewise function for f prime of x. And then note that uh, we didn't define uh, a function yet for x equals zero because we haven't proved, proven yet if f prime of x exists at x equals zero, which of course we're gonna do next. Next, let's get the left and right derivatives. So if we want to get the right derivative, of course we'll get the limit of f prime of x as x approaches zero from the right. If you check, the function secant x times the quantity x tangent x plus one is the function that's on the right of uh, uh, zero. So we'll get this limit. So of course with this uh, specific example, we'll evaluate the function at zero, we'll get the value one. And then if you want to get the left derivative, of course we'll get the limit of f prime of x as x approaches zero from the left. And then the function that's on the left of zero is three x squared plus one. So of course this is a continuous function. So we'll just evaluate this at zero to get one as well. So since the left and right derivatives are equal, it follows that f of x is differentiable at x equals zero. Now let's move on to chain rule. So given this theorem, if the function g is differentiable at x equals x naught, and the function f is differentiable at g of x naught, then f of g of x is differentiable at x equals x naught, and f of g prime of x naught is given by f prime of g of x naught multiplied by g prime of x naught. So let's dive into this theorem a little bit further. So the chain rule can also be stated in the following manner. So if you let y equal f of u, and you let u equal g of x, so if you do substitution, you'll get f of g of x as well, then the derivative of y with respect to d, respect to x is equal to the derivative of y with respect to u multiplied by the derivative of u with respect to x. These two expressions mean the same thing, just what the, the thing I just said. And then we can generalize the chain rule for a finite composition of functions. So that's uh, just the general form of the ch chain rule. And then if you want to think of the chain rule in a more descriptive manner, where you don't have to use any of the expressions that were given in the theorem, you can read it as the derivative of f of g of x is the derivative of the outside function evaluated at the inside function times the derivative of the inside function. So that's just putting the theorem into words from the expression. So let's apply this in, the, in this following example. So let's get the derivative of the following function, cosine of five x squared plus tangent x raised to the fourth power 
evaluate that zero. So of course, we first have to get the derivative of the function. So of course, we'll have to apply a chain rule. And if you look at it, uh, it's uh, a double composition of functions. So if you look at the function, you'll see that the outermost function is x to the fourth. So, so it's x to the fourth. And then the second outermost function is cosine of x. And then the, the innermost function is 5x squared plus tangent x. And then we'll get the derivatives of the following function. So you'll get the following. Then applying the chain rule, you'll have to look at this expression. You'll get the following expression if you apply the chain rule. So if you input the value of the expressions that we got, you get this. Now, since we want to get f prime of zero, we'll now evaluate the, this expression that we got at x equals zero. So we'll get that. And then we know that cosine of zero is equal to one, sine of zero is equal to zero. So anything multiplied by zero, it gets zero. And so we get the following value. Okay, I think that's all. Thanks guys for listening.